If you're watching this, it means that thousands of little catalysts by the name of enzymes are running around your body digesting food, providing you with energy to move, and are even busy making new cells. But this isn't the limit to what catalysts are used for. They're also used in industry for the catalytic cracking of gas oil, and even in cars to reduce the toxicity of fuel emissions. But what are catalysts, and how do they work? The formal definition of a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. Here's an example of a catalytic reaction. This is the hydrogenation of an alkene using the Wilkinson's catalyst. If you add these two substances without the catalyst, nothing would happen. Looking at an energy diagram, we can see that the addition of a catalyst reduces the activation energy, that is, the energy required for the reaction to proceed. But this still does not answer the question, how does it work? So let's look at the mechanism of the catalyst. As you can see, the catalyst undergoes a series of transformations and is regenerated at the end of the reaction. The mechanism, although not incorrect, can be better presented with the use of a catalytic cycle. Consider the hypothetical reaction here. The metal binds the substrates, S, forms a transition state, X, and finally forms the product, P, which dissociates to regenerate the active catalyst. Important reactions, such as the dimerization of certain molecules, can be shown in this cycle. As we can see from the diagram, the substance we add to the reaction is generally not the substance that acts as a catalyst. In the case of the Wilkinson's catalyst, this would be the replacement of a triphenylphosphine with a solvent molecule. Looking at the energy diagram for this particular reaction, we can see that the mechanism of a catalyst is such that it provides a pathway for our reaction to proceed via a lower energy intermediate. A key point to mention is that all of the reactions in this cycle are in equilibria. This means that the pathway for a molecule is not so straightforward. There are ways we can manipulate this though. By modifying the reaction such that a gas is released, the product will bubble out of the solution or by simply removing the product when it's formed, we block the reverse reaction and thereby force the reaction forward. Each of the individual reactions in this cycle are commonly seen amongst other catalytic cycles, and so they're given names. For example, the addition of dihydrogen to form two hydride ligands on the metal is called oxidative addition. Oxidative because the metal is increasing in oxidation number, and addition due to the ligand coordination to the metal, i.e. addition of ligands. There are two types of catalysts you may encounter, heterogeneous and homogeneous. Hetero, meaning different, means that the catalyst and the reactants are in two different phases. For example, a gas phase reactant is placed over a solid state catalyst, usually at high temperatures and pressures. Homo, meaning same, means the catalyst is in the same phase as the reactants, usually both liquids. Due to the limitations of analysis, we have very limited knowledge of the mechanism of heterogeneous catalysts. So these mechanisms shown in the catalytic cycle can only be confirmed for homogeneous catalysts. The catalyst in these reactions often must be able to switch between two stable oxidation states, often involving a variation of the coordination number this simply being the number of ligands attached to the central metal ion. The Wilkinson's reaction, for example, switches between the plus one square planar and plus three octahedral oxidation states. Here's a list of reactions that are commonly seen amongst catalysts. A catalytic cycle can involve a number of these reactions, but ultimately must return to its original state. So far, we've talked mainly about the thermodynamics of this reaction. While a reaction that has a large thermodynamic favorability, the rate of the reaction may still be small. The kinetics of a reaction are governed by its individual steps. Each step in the catalytic cycle has its own activation energy and rate of reaction. If one of the steps has an activation energy too high, this will hinder the overall reaction rate because of the large amount of energy required to overcome the barrier. From this, we can see that reaction with a number of small activation barriers is largely preferred over those with few steps with large activation barriers. Reaction rates can also be improved by adjusting the temperature and pressure to improve the rate of collision.
catalysts have been and will remain to be a very large and key research subject, and rightfully so. Their application and research run all the way through biology, chemistry and physics, and if not for their presence, we wouldn't be even alive to study them. So thanks for watching.